Greetings, this is Dr. Sandra Cabot talking to you about osteoporosis. This is my third and last video on osteoporosis. In this video we'll look at natural therapies to increase bone density as well as effective prescribed medications. Osteoporosis is very common and is a severe loss of bone density. Osteopenia is also a loss of bone density but to a far lesser degree. If you have osteopenia it is easier to increase your bone density. If you have osteoporosis it is harder but not impossible and at the end of this video I will share a case history with you of one of my patients who had osteoporosis but by using natural therapies was able to increase her bone density so that she fell into the osteopenia range which is a much lesser loss of bone density. So let's start with looking at some of the supplements you can take to increase your bone density and make your bone stronger. First of all, let's look at building collagen in your bone. Collagen is very important and gives your bones flexibility so that if you fall over, you're far less likely to break a bone. To build collagen, we need vitamin C, zinc, the vitamin biotin, silica, and the mineral sulfur. These are all required for collagen production. Your bones are made of 40% hard collagen, which is a type of protein. There is a powder called collagen food powder, which contains all of these things, namely vitamin C, zinc, biotin, silica, and sulfur. And this powder can be added to drinks or water. It is suitable for people who want to build the collagen in their bones and want a vegan product. Most formulas on the market to build collagen contain animal collagen. However, the collagen food powder produced by Cabo Health is a vegan product and provides your body with the necessary ingredients to increase its own production of collagen. Something I always recommend for patients with osteoporosis or osteopenia is magnesium. This is because magnesium is an essential supplement for strong bones and tendons. Indeed, 80% of the magnesium in your body is found in your bones, and for good reason. Magnesium is a mineral that gives your bones more density and weight. Magnesium ultrapotent powder is a well-absorbed form of magnesium and has four different types of magnesium in an ideal ratio for optimal performance. Other bone building supplements. Have you heard of the formula Bone Build, which contains a well absorbed form of calcium known as calcium hydroxyapatite? And hydroxyapatite is the type of calcium that is naturally present in your bones. Bone Build also contains other bone essential minerals, magnesium, manganese, zinc, silica, boron, and copper. Avoid calcium carbonate supplements, as they are poorly absorbed into bone and can accumulate in arterial walls. Calcium carbonate is the same form of calcium that is found in chalk and is not well absorbed or utilized by the body. Calcium carbonate is commonly used in supplements because it is cheap. The dose of bone build capsules required varies depending on the severity of your osteoporosis. If you have osteopenia, which is not as severe as osteoporosis, you probably only need one capsule daily. However, if you have a greater loss of bone density, namely osteoporosis, you will need two capsules of bone build daily. 
Bone build also contains vitamin D3 and vitamin K. However, if you have osteoporosis, I recommend the higher amounts of vitamin K and D3 found in the Super Vitamin K capsules. The Liver Doctor brand of Super Vitamin K is the leading brand as it contains all the active forms of vitamin K, namely MK4 and MK7, plus an extra 2,000 international units of vitamin D3 per capsule. Super Vitamin K contains 2,200 micrograms of vitamin K per capsule, and these higher doses are much more effective than low dose vitamin K. If you have osteoporosis, I recommend a dose of two capsules of Super Vitamin K daily with food. The only contraindication to taking vitamin K is if you are taking Coumadin drugs such as warfarin to thin the blood. Now let's look at an interesting mineral called strontium. Some people with osteoporosis can really benefit from the mineral strontium, but discuss this with your doctor first, and it is slightly controversial. Strontium is a naturally occurring mineral present in the soils, food and water. The availability of strontium from food, like many other minerals, depends on the content of strontium in the soils of the regions where the produce is grown. Thus food is an unreliable source of strontium. Do not confuse strontium with toxic radioactive strontium-90 as they have entirely different effects in the body. The nutritional version of strontium can be taken safely in a low dose for years and actually removes radioactive strontium from the body if it is present in any significant amounts. Trace amounts of strontium are found in the human skeleton and strontium is naturally absorbed at the bone matrix crystal surface. The effects of strontium on bone metabolism have been researched since the 1950s and trials have shown that strontium improves bone metabolism by promoting new bone formation and decreasing bone breakdown. This promotes a normalized bone density. Studies conducted at McGill University in the 1980s and numerous worldwide studies since the 1950s confirm the bone building and fracture preventative effects of the mineral strontium. Most of the recent research has used high dose strontium ranolate, branded Protoss, but similarly good results can be achieved with much lower doses and other salts of strontium such as gluconate, citrate and lactate. I never recommend large doses of strontium and always check with your healthcare professional before taking large doses of any nutritional supplement. In patients with low bone density, not responding sufficiently to exercise and vitamin D3 and vitamin K, I recommend the mineral strontium citrate as a worthwhile supplement. Larger doses of strontium in lightweight people can cause digestive problems such as nausea and reduced appetite. I prefer strontium citrate with a lower dose of strontium. The dose I start with is 350 milligrams every second day and in many patients this is enough to get results. In very sensitive people the dose of strontium can be reduced even lower so that there are no digestive side effects. I have found that patients with low bone density only need to take a course of strontium citrate in a dose of 350 milligrams every second day for 12 months. This can be repeated every 12 months if bone density starts to diminish again. Strontium accumulates in the bones over 12 months and will be sufficient for an improvement in bone density over the long term. In my practice, I generally see 5 to 10% improvements in bone density after 12 months using strontium citrate in low doses. Another recognized benefit of strontium is pain relief and the remineralizing of bones affected by cancer metastases. 
Strontium supplements also reduce the incidence of dental cavities and improve cartilage metabolism in osteoarthritis. Research indicates that the optimal therapeutic daily, day, say again, daily dose of strontium supplements is 680 to 1000 milligrams. However, I prefer to use lower doses for preventative effects. Strontium is a useful aid to build bone density, especially in people who are intolerant to prescribed medications such as the bisphosphonate drugs. And this includes a lot of people. Furthermore, bisphosphonate drugs can only be taken for five years due to a risk of jawbone death known as bone necrosis. Strontium should be taken at night on retiring, away from food and away from calcium supplements because calcium impairs strontium absorption. People with a history of blood clots or heart disease should not take strontium in high doses and should check with their healthcare practitioner. Strontium should also be avoided in pregnancy and lactation. It's interesting to note that a combination of vitamin D, vitamin K, magnesium and glutamine powder also reduce bone and muscle pain known as fibromyalgia and polymyalgia. This is very useful because many people do suffer with aching muscles and this condition of fibromyalgia can be very stubborn. So remember, try vitamin D, vitamin K, magnesium and glutamine powder. The glutamine powder is stirred into water and can be taken in a dose of one teaspoon two to three times daily. And it's great for muscle strength and muscle health. So what else can I do if I have osteoporosis? Well, definitely talk to your doctor about the use of treatments to prevent bone loss. You may need to see an endocrinologist, which is a hormone specialist, who specializes in the treatment of osteoporosis. You will need to take the minerals and vitamins mentioned in this video on a regular basis and must also ensure that your blood vitamin D levels are optimal. You need a regular exercise program, even if it's only walking 30 minutes a day. Please avoid falls by looking where you walk and never rush. Carry a small torch in your bag or pocket at night to see where you are going. Leave a torch by your bedside, as many people fall over at night going to the toilet. So a simple torch at night near your bed is a very useful tool. Many people with osteoporosis never have any problems until they fall over and fracture a bone. Now let's look at hormones. Can they help to build bone density? Bioidentical hormones. If you are a menopausal woman, talk to your doctor about the use of bioidentical sex hormones such as testosterone, estrogen and progesterone. Women with an early menopause under the age of 40 are at greater risk for bone loss as their hormone levels plummet too soon in their lifespan. If your blood levels of testosterone are very low, you may benefit from low-dose testosterone in a cream in a dose of 2 to 4 milligrams daily to rub into the skin in the armpit or the skin on the vulva. Bioidentical hormones can be given in the form of a cream or lozenges known as trochies. Let's look at the bisphosphonate drugs. The conventional treatment for osteoporosis is a class of drugs taken by mouth known as bisphosphonates. Examples are the brands Fosamax and Actinil. Bisphosphonate drugs work by stopping bone turnover. 
In other words, they stop the breakdown and building of bone. I have never felt comfortable prescribing this class of drugs because bisphosphonates can have irreversible side effects. These include necrosis, meaning death of the jawbone, atypical fractures which do not heal well, and gut dysfunction. It is generally accepted, but not always adhered to, that bisphosphonate drugs should only be taken for a maximum of five years to avoid such awful side effects. Let's look at another drug which is commonly used for osteoporosis called denosumab. It's also known as prolia. Prolia is injected every six months. Prolia is effective in stopping bone loss but can have side effects including an increased risk of infections, skin problems such as rashes, blistering, itching, cracking, dryness or reddening of the skin and it can also cause aches and pains especially in the arms and legs. The scary thing to me about using denosumab or prolia is that if you quit using it suddenly this may increase your risk of more bone fractures and they will not heal well. You could be worse off than before you started taking this drug. You must tell your doctors that you are receiving prolia or denosumab injection, including your dentist. If you are having dental procedures on this drug, you may have an increased chance of having a severe problem with your jaw. To put it bluntly, your jawbone may die. Long-term use of prolia may increase your risk of developing fractures of the thigh bone, which may present as a dull or aching pain in the thigh, groin or hips. Many people cannot tolerate the prescription drugs commonly used to prevent and treat osteoporosis. They may be nervous about the potential side effects, which can be severe. So talk to your own doctor. Although I am not a fan of these drugs, your doctor may be and some people may need these drugs and not everyone will have these side effects. So it is a bit of a controversial area and that's just my opinion. So it's always important to talk to your own doctor. Now how do you know if you have low bone density? The gold standard test to measure how dense or strong your skeletal bones are is a DEXA test and is widely available. DEXA stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry. A DEXA test can measure bone density in the spine, hip, forearm and the total body. It is one of the most common methods to determine bone density as it is fast, painless and fairly accurate. The amount of radiation used in DEXA scans is low and similar to the amount of radiation used in common x-rays. Pitfalls in DEXA scans are common and errors can be categorized as patient positioning, data analysis and artifacts. When DEXA studies are performed incorrectly, it can lead to major mistakes in diagnosis and management. Measurement error must be considered when evaluating serial assessments with a DEXA scan. Initial screening for osteoporosis should be performed according to National Osteoporosis Foundation recommendations. The optimal interval for repeating DEXA scans is uncertain, but because changes in bone density over short intervals are often smaller than the measurement error of most DEXA scanners, frequent testing, e.g. under two years, is unnecessary in most patients. Even in high-risk patients receiving drug therapy for osteoporosis, DEXA changes do not always correlate with the probability of fracture. Therefore, DEXA should only be repeated if the result will influence clinical management or if rapid changes in bone density are expected. Recent evidence also suggests that healthy women 67 years and older with normal bone density and mass may not need additional DEXA testing for up to 10 years.
provided osteoporosis risk factors do not significantly change. So let's look at an interesting case history that is written by one of my patients named Angela. And I appreciate her, her kindness in sharing her experience. Okay, so I quote Angela. I would like to express my thanks for the benefits experienced from recent consultations with Dr. Sandra Cabot McRae, specifically to address advice on bone density. I come from a family with chronic osteoporosis on my mother's side, with four siblings, including two younger brothers, currently on prolia injections. At age 45, I was the first in my family to be diagnosed with osteopenia, and I started bioidentical hormone treatment, which kept my bones fairly stable for 19 years. In 2021, at age 64, a biennial bone density test showed my spine had deteriorated to osteoporosis with a T-score of minus 2.6. I contacted Dr. Sandra Cabot McRae, who adjusted my bioidentical hormone treatment and recommended a program of the following vitamins and supplements to increase bone density. Vitamin D, selenium, calcium, collagen food powder, magnesium ultra-potent powder, kelp powder, NAC, and the Liver Doctor brand of Super Vitamin K capsules. Additionally, Dr. Cabot suggested a gluten-free diet and recommended more exercise. I commenced the Onero exercise program for osteoporosis developed by Griffith University in Queensland, attending two classes weekly for weights, balance, and core exercises. After one year on Dr. Cabot's recommended program, the T-score for my bone density in my spine increased by 0.2, bringing it up into the osteopenia range and out of the osteoporosis range. Dr. Cabot suggested a yearly bone density test and this year the T-score increased a further 0.1. I'm grateful to Dr. Cabot for her evidence-based approach which has successfully improved my bone density. Now, to those listening, if you would like references, we can supply you with those, and you can click on the link below to see the scientific references. So if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis, it's not something to get depressed about. There's so much you can do to increase your bone density. But the sooner you start, the better. If you have any questions, please email us from liverdoctor.com or sandracabot.com and I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please click like, subscribe and share it with your friends and thanks for listening.